Hi, I'm Peter Koch from the Department of Physics and Astronomy at the University of Sheffield. I'm a lecturer in quantum information theory, and in my spare time I like to watch movies, in particular time travel movies. Um, some of my favorites, of course, are Terminator, uh, Back to the Future, and my all-time favorite is Primer. Um, the problem with time travel movies is that sometimes they, they don't get the physics right. And as a physicist, this bothers me. Um, an example of this is when Marty McFly is playing the guitar in Back to the Future 1. He, uh, he has a photograph on the neck of his guitar. And his brother and sister are slowly fading out of the photograph as uh, his parents are drifting apart. And this, there is no me physical mechanism for this. And uh, so I'd like to study time travel in a little bit more uh, detail, a bit more scientifically. And, um, oh, I have to go to my lecture. Ah. Sorry. Ah. Now I've got to go change. Yeah, this happens all the time. Um, right, so time travel gives rise to all sorts of paradoxes. For example, you can go back in time uh, to the point where your grandfather has not had any children yet, kill him, that means he won't have any children, one of your parents will not have been born, and so you could not have been born, and so you can't go back in time to kill your grandfather, at which point he lives, has children, and you will be born, so you can go in, back in time, and it goes around and around and around. Uh, so you see that there's a paradox there, and this is the sort of thing that, as a theoretical physicist, I love, and I use mathematics to try and solve this uh, paradox. I also like to simplify uh, this paradox a little bit, because we don't have to involve uh, Grandpa in this scenario, we can just do it all by ourselves. For example, I have a, a, a diagram here. So, this is our time machine. Time runs in the vertical direction, so lower is earlier and later is higher up on the board. And here is our time machine. It consists of two parts. You, the bit that you go in, and then you pop out earlier, so lower, out of this part of the time machine. And so now we have the situation where I'm going into the time machine, pop out earlier and encounter my younger self, I kill myself, and that means that that person cannot go into the time machine anymore. And so we have the paradox again. And mathematically speaking, we can just say dead or alive, that's all we need. So that's just one bit of information. So let's say zero is dead and one is alive. Then we can say that my younger self has a bit value 0 and 1. My older self has a bit value of 0 and 1. We call it x and y. And then when my older self kills my younger self, that is a controlled bit flip. Because I go from 1, alive, to 0, dead. But it only happens if I'm already alive. So if I'm 1. So that's why it's controlled. And then when we work through the maths, we find that x plus y equals y. Which means that x must be equal to 0. Now that means that I wasn't born in the first place. And so, of course, if I'm not born at all, then there is no paradox. Now, in quantum mechanics, you can solve the time travel paradox in a much more elegant way, because in the classical situation, we, had, we determined that you are dead right from the start. In quantum mechanics, you can be dead or alive, or most importantly, you can be in a superposition of being dead and alive. And you may already be aware that this is possible because, of course, Schrodinger's cat uh, is dead or alive and in a superposition. So, when you allow superpositions of zero and one for these bit values in quantum mechanics, it turns out you can be any state of dead and alive when you go in, and there is a resolution for the time travel paradox. So the time machine does not impose any restrictions on the world before it came into existence. That is a very important point. And how does quantum mechanics do this? So how does quantum mechanics solve this time travel paradox? Well, for that, you could go to the many worlds interpretation in which uh, different branches 
of the superposition are actually different universes. And what happens when you go back in time and you kill your older self, you actually jump from one universe to another. And this is how quantum mechanics solves time travel. Oh, I need to go to my lecture. Ah, sorry. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs>